Hi everyone. So I am sitting in my makeshift office. Um, it's actually Marvin's massage room. And you can see my setup. Yeah, I've got my coffee and my blue light glasses and my computer. Um, and I'm not having like a meeting or work session. I'm going to be um, doing telehealth with my therapist this morning. So I'm getting all set up and ready. And um, I wanted to come on here because um, I've been seeing a lot of things and hearing a lot of things about um, how we're all surviving this pandemic. Um, and um, this is not to speak to individuals who do not have a problem. So this is for those of you out there um, doing your absolute best to maintain your sobriety through all that's going on. Um, I'd like to start with number one. Remember that everything that you see on Instagram and Facebook is but a glimpse. A snapshot so just because it looks like someone may be handling things well you didn't see their full mental breakdown and adult temper tantrum yesterday right you didn't see that moment when they lost it on their kids trying to do distance learning you didn't see um, the argument they have with their spouse over probably something mundane like we're all going through this um, and you know, if you already have um, anxiety, depression, or anything else, it can feel worse right now. Um, and if you if you haven't dealt with that before, you're probably feeling some semblance of that now. You know, we're we're grieving. We're grieving the loss of the lives that we know and understand. Um, and so we're going through all of that. And then on top of it, we have the anxiety, the fear of, you know our own family's health and safety, our health and safety. If you own a business like we do, how is our business going to survive this? Um, how are we going to come out of this financially? You know, there's, there's so many layers upon layers of uncontrollables. So for me, um, I, I, am, I am extremely fortunate to have already developed a toolkit, a system of um, new tools that I started building um, I guess two and a half years ago when I first got sober. Um, and that toolkit includes ways to check myself and check my thinking. Um, and I've also been practicing it for two and a half years daily. Um, and I don't, get, I don't get to take a break from that because when I do, I feel it. And then the, the, the thinking that gets me in that mindset, it takes over. Um, have I thought about drinking during this time? In the very beginning, um, with all of the uncontrollables, with, with not knowing where our business was going to go and all of that and feeling very hopeless um, and helpless, uh, you know, for a minute I did. And um, in the past, like as I got sober, there were definitely times that it would cross my mind and it would feel like, no, you know what, screw this shit. I don't even want to deal with it. I'm just going to go get, you know... I'm just gonna go numb myself until I go to sleep or numb myself until everything's okay again. Um, and a lot of things that stopped me in the beginning in early sobriety was, was some of the, the tools that I didn't even know I had in place. Um, you know, from the get-go, I knew that I couldn't do this on my own. Um, I figured that out on day two when I reached out to a friend and said, yo, like, I don't know why, but quitting coffee is easy and quitting alcohol is not. So what do I do with that? And um, he gave me some ideas. And then my therapist gave me some more ideas. Um, and my therapist's recommendation was, don't do it alone. That took me a long time to figure out um, how then not to do it alone. Like, what, what was going to work for me? And I stayed away from some of the traditional methods. Um from 12-step um, programs and such for a long time because it just didn't jive for me. Um, I did end up um, in such a place um, and that's what worked for me. And, the, and it helped me build the tool sets that I have in place now. So what are my, what's in my toolkit to stay sober during this time? So number one, um, I play the tape through. And I know for a fact that drinking more than one cup of coffee a day or, and both, drinking alcohol would make my anxiety unmanageable. So unmanageable. I would lose my beautiful sleep that I'm getting at night. I would then be more tired. 
Um, I would develop this horrible cycle of drink too much in the evening, drink too much coffee in the morning, blah, 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 blah. And I would be wrecked. I'd be physically wrecked. I'd be emotionally wrecked. I'd be spiritually wrecked. I would be just a show. That is how I would be going through all of this. And it's it sucks to feel like that. It sucks so bad. Um, and so I remind myself of that. I remember how bad it sucked. I remember that I I have I I deal with you know, a more anxious personality and a go, 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 um, drive right now, I don't need assistance. And I damn sure don't need that to be triggered by some kind of substance. I have a global pandemic that's doing that for me right now. Um, so that's number one, you know, I play that tape through. Number two is I own up. And so back to this, not doing it alone. I have phone numbers, um, I have emails, I have online friends, I have tons of people that I can reach out to and send a message. And even if I just send them a message to say, hey, what's up, how are you? It gets me out of here, you know? Hearing other people's stories, listening to other people takes me out of here. And sometimes I only need to be out of here for five seconds and then I'm feeling good again. Sometimes I need to reach out to literally everybody that I know and have conversations with all of them throughout the entire day to get me out of here. It just, you know, it just depends. Um, so what else? I, um, I make sure that I eat because being hangry is not good for my mental well-being. Um, I make sure that I get outside if I can because fresh air and sunlight help me ground myself in myself. Um, I move. I make sure that I take deep breaths throughout the day. I have a tendency to hold my breath when I get worked up. So I make sure that I breathe. I ask for breaks. Um, and I am, I am very fortunate to have the ability to take breaks. I also have a therapist and I know that I am fortunate to have that as well. A lot of insurance companies right now, if you have insurance, are offering telehealth. I have Ambetter through the marketplace and they have expanded their telehealth offerings. So I am covered for my therapist. Um, she's fantastic. And we will be having our first telehealth session today. Um, and I sleep. I don't stay up late. I can't. If I miss sleep, um, that definitely is a big one for me, a very big one. And then, you know, expectations, right? So in the beginning, it was like, I'm got, I've got to do all this distance learning. My kids who are pre-K and first grade, they need to know all the things to get to the next grade level. Like, I've got to transition my business to online. I've got to you know, study the certification that I'm trying to work on. I've got to take care of all my clients. I've got to make sure that my husband's taking care of his health and I've got to take care of my health and I've got to blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's what it's like to be my brain. And so I had to let go. And that is one that I learn day to day. I got to let go of all that stuff. You know, if we wake up in the morning and my kids just aren't on it for distance learning that day, fantastic. Let's play outside. And then we take a break. Let's see if they want to get anything done. Um, you know, we're not making any income right now. Zero. And we have been fortunate to have family um, chip in and help us. Um, but, like, that's going to run out. And um, we've applied for the federal aid that's coming through with the CARES um, relief funds. And... I don't know when that's going to kick in. So right now, that's one of those things that I, I've done everything that I can. Um, and as we transition online, it's going to take time to build that up. So what do I do in the meantime? We just keep doing what we do. Um, and we share what we know. That's our version of helping. You know, we stay home and isolated or we stay here at work isolated from people. And we take care of ourselves. And we take care of our community by just sharing what we know. Just put it out there. You know, um, and beyond that, you know, I, um, I do some online meetings and I remind myself of my toolkit. I check in with that every second that I need to and sometimes more. Um, I reach out to the same kind of group of people that I have in my life daily. Sometimes that's with the gratitude list and that's usually because I need to remind myself I have a lot to be thankful for. Um, because as I was telling my partner this morning, you know, the scarcity mindset, that's my default to believe that, you know, on a day to day that the world's going to end, that we're not going to have enough, that I am not enough, that I cannot do this, that nothing is possible, blah, blah, blah. 
but really I've already conquered the impossible in so many ways. And that's it. So I am grateful that I don't right in this moment feel the need to check out. That I can sit here with everything that's going on and prepare for um, some self-care. That I can be honest with myself and I can say this morning I was anxious. We had a lot going on. Um, on top of changes to how we pick up meals for our kids and um, changes to how we're offering live classes on our Facebook page and I'm going to be teaching some in the afternoon and I'm nervous about that because I haven't been teaching since my surgery and there's a lot going on up here and so I'm making this video um, partly to remind myself that I have a toolkit but also to shed light on a type of toolkit that's out there for those of you um, that need that reminder. Check your toolkit. And if you're missing some items in there, you know, think about what that means for you and where you might go to collect some new tools. Um, if you need any resources or tips, you can send me a message and I'm happy to share um, because you know we're all in this together. It is a um, one day at a time type of situation, but you know, it's a one breath at a time for me situation. And you know, just remind yourself what you are capable of controlling. And if that's very little, you know, just, just taking care of you, then that's more than enough, more than enough. All right, y'all stay healthy. I hope that you, Got a little bit of something out of this, if not um, only that you are not alone and we can do this if we have each other. I love you all. Have a good day.